Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Tracy, if you haven't been here before, and this is a DIY upcycling channel. And I recently refreshed my summer wardrobe and I made two colorful tops. They're cotton, lightweight, feminine, and I made them out of dingy old t-shirts of my husband's. When they get dingy or little stains, he gives them to me to upcycle, and I'm going to show you how I made them. I'm taking the V-neck and I'm going to crop it about, I I'm cropping mine between sort of my chest and my belly button about right here. And then I'm going to cut the sleeves off. There's a seam right here. I'm just going to cut next to that seam on the sleeve side of it. To get it cropped where I want it is 14 and a half inches up from the bottom. So I lined the bottom up perfectly and just smoothed everything out. Now I'm just going to take my yardstick and just cut straight across at 14 and a half inches. And now I'm just going to cut these sleeves off. First, I want to make the eight inch ruffle all the way around. So I'm going to cut my strips at eight and a half inches to give me room for seam allowance. Now the piece I cut off of this, it won't be quite enough to do that. So now I'm going to my other t-shirt and I am going to cut two eight and a half inch strips off of this one. And the first thing I'm going to do is here's the bottom of that t-shirt. I'm just cutting that hem off. And t-shirts are wonderful in the sense that they do not fray. Now I'm just going to cut this t-shirt open. Now I'm just going to cut two rows of ruffle, eight and a half inches tall. Now I have two strips of fabric that look like this, and I need to sew them together. One would not be enough. Two is probably going to be too long, but I can always trim that off. I am sewing this together just at one end, and I am putting right sides together. If there is a right side, mine doesn't matter. Just going to line these up, and with my yellow thread, because I will be dyeing it yellow, I am going to do a straight stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. So now I want to add the ruffle to the shirt. Here's the shirt, the V-necks right here. I have it sideways so that I can see it. And I am going to start at the side and take my big ruffle and I'm going to lay it right sides together if there is a right side with the ruffle just laying right on top of the shirt like that. Now I'll go to the side and line it up with the bottom and use a quarter inch seam allowance, my yellow thread. But I'm going to leave about an inch and a half right here so that I can sew this together when I get to the end. So I'll start an inch and a half in sew a little bit, do a pinch pleat, I'd say maybe half an inch overlapping, go another inch and a half, overlap it. I want this to be fairly roughly, so, and just keep pinch pleating it all the way around, and when we get close to the end, I'll show you what I do. Okay, so I'm almost all the way around. Here's where I started, leaving that little piece to sew on to. And I'm going to stop a couple inches from that and just do a little back stitch. Now, I just need to sort of eyeball this. I need to sew these together so we have a solid ruffle. And I need to make room for another little pleat. So I'm going to cut mine off about right here straight down this ruffle. And since I backstitched, now I can pull this out of my machine. 
And now what I need to do, here's one end of the ruffle I cut, here's the other one. I need to sew them right sides together. Okay, so now my ruffle is sewn together, but I still have a gap right here that I have to sew closed. So I'm going to put this back into my machine, go over a little bit where I left off, forward and back, and now I'm just going to sew that closed with a little bit of pleating. Okay, that's what that ruffle looks like. It's such a feminine, flattering look, especially if you just don't like things super tight around your waist and things like that. Now, I'm going to do the same thing as I did here on the arms, only I'm doing a three inch ruffle because I want it more of a cap sleeve. Now, I think the number one complaint I hear from women is they don't like their arms. You would think it might be stomach or legs or something, but I hear arms over and over again. And if you're one of those, you customize that sleeve to whatever makes you feel pretty and feel good in. You could do five inch, whatever you want, make it yours. So I'm going to take the bottom of that original shirt. And since I only need three inch ruffles, this will be plenty because I only need one strip for each arm. So I'm going to cut three and a half inch strips to make a three inch ruffle because I need seam allowance. Now I'm going to sew these ruffles on exactly like I did this. Only this time I'm going to start at the bottom with my little inch and a half flap, right sides together, pinch pleat all the way around. When I get here, sew the ends together, sew the gap closed. Okay, how cute is that already? I mean, these were just two dingy men's t-shirts. So fun. Now, I made two shirts for myself in this similar style, and one I left just like this. These don't fray, and that's super cute. And on the other one, which I'm going to do here, is add another little mini ruffle around the edge of this ruffle and here, just for another pretty detail. So I am finding what's left over of these t-shirts and I am just going to cut a bunch of strips that are three quarter inch wide and then I'll show you what I do. I am not going to measure these. They do not have to be perfect and that would take forever. I'm just eyeballing these strips. Okay, I have about eight strips here. If I need more, I'll cut more and I'll show you how I sew them on. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the sleeves that I do to the bottom. So I am just going to the edge of the shirt and I like starting on the side. And this one you don't have to leave a little flat because when we get back around, we just overlap it. This is the super easy kind of fun part. All right, I'll just stick it in my, in my machine. I will have this ruffle just overlap that edge a tiny bit so that you can't see the edge. And then I will sew right down the center of this ruffle. So I'll start here in my machine with a straight stitch and I'll do lots of pleating. So pleat, sew, pleat, sew, till I get all the way around and I just overlap it when I'm done. Now I'm at the end of one of my strips. I'm just simply going to take the next one, overlap it, keep trucking along. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, here's that ruffle detail. So cute. And those eight strips of fabric that I cut, this is all I have left. So that was right on the money. <laughs> Now I'm going to take it upstairs and dye it this Rit Dye More Daffodil Yellow. Now Rit Dye More is typically for synthetic fabrics, but you can certainly use it on natural fabrics. And I just love this color, so that's what I'm going to do. If you don't want to do any dyeing, just find t-shirts that are already a color that you love. So to dye this, I took a pot, filled it up to about here with water. And I'm going to put a couple pumps of Dawn soap in there and I'm going to take my dye and I'm going to start with about a third of the bottle because I can always add more and then I'm going to stir. I heated this to about a simmer. 200 degrees is the ideal temperature. And I'm just going to test it with a paper towel. Now that is not nearly bright enough for me. So I'm going to add a bunch more and stir it up. I'm just gonna add the whole bottle. I want this to be a rich yellow. There we go. Now I got my shirt wet and wrung it out a little bit. I'm just going to put it in and I'm going to constantly stir for 30 minutes. Okay, when the 30 minutes is up, technically what you do is rinse, rinse, rinse until the color runs clear and wring it out. But I have a little cheat because I don't like wringing things out and doing all that rinsing. So I'm going to transfer it to this bucket. I'm going to dump it in my washer. And I'm going to set my washer on rinse and spin. Then when I'm done rinsing and spinning it, I'm going to dry it in my dryer. Okay, here it is out of the dryer. And now I'm going to decorate a little bit, sew some patches and applique. If you don't want to mess with that, just find a t-shirt that already has cute graphics on it. Now I'm just pinning on some pretty patches and appliques. I get them from all different sources like this little patch is from a dress this is from an old quilt topper that i found at the thrift store the bird for example is a pillow cover from amazon these flowers i believe were a a curtain if i remember correctly um etsy has sites where you can just buy appliques I have a little cutting mat underneath here that I slip between the fabric so that I can pin it easier. Now I'm on the back. I have a little butterfly that actually came from an Amazon bathroom set, a shower curtain and some mats, things like that. I've used that a lot on projects. Okay, now I have everything pinned on. That's what it's looking like. And now I'm going to go to my machine and with one of my smaller zigzag stitches, I am going to use gold colored thread, not metallic, but like a mustard. And I am just going to go around the edges of everything staying as close to the edge as I can. And when I get that done, I'll put it on and show you what it looks like. Okay, it's all done. How fun is that? What a huge transformation, right? To launder this, I would wash it on a delicate cycle in cold water. If you like, or put it in your dryer to dry, it may fray more. And my appliques will fray some around the edges to help prevent that. You can back it with fusible interfacing and will this dye bleed onto the patches? Possibly, but I don't sweat that kind of stuff. It'll probably just make it look aged and even more cute. Let me give you a little more of a close up. Okay, have fun sewing. Thank you so much.
much for watching.